Hey, hello everyone. Welcome back to AKT Developers. So, uh, in today's tutorial, we will learn about Room Persistence Library. So, what is Room? Before that, let's talk something about previously we were using. Previously, we were using SQLite as an Android database, right? It was easy to use and uh, just we need to know about queries and we are very comfortable with SQLite database. But not, but now we are having Room. In 2017, the Google I.O. has launched a Room database. Room database has been said the most smooth and robust version of SQLite uh, for the Android database. Uh, now why it is more advanced version of SQLite, why it is, has been said? Because Room library eliminates a lot of boilerplate code which we were previously implementing in SQLite database. Room library provides an abstraction layer over the SQLite database which means it is an advanced version of SQLite database and helps us to create the cache of our app apps data on the device that is running our app right room is uh, orm between java classes and sqlite in room we cannot have a complex nesting and objects like orm solution provide right now uh, room are basically divided into three components first one is a database uh, we will learn all three, the three components in today's tutorial and second one is entity and third one is dao now let's see uh, diagrammatically what are the components of room database first of all we need we will create a new kotlin file which is room database and then we need one more uh, kotlin file for entities which will store all the datas or columns you can say of our database and then we will have a third file of data access objects which will contain all the functions or operations which we are going to perform uh, with our database so without wasting much time let's start our project open the android studio here, I had created an empty Kotlin project and I had named it as RoomDB. Let's go to build.gradle file. In order to use uh, Room database or Room persistent library, we need to add some uh, Gradle uh, dependencies to our project. So for that, let's go to this uh, Android developers page and uh, here are our dependencies, that is Room. Let's copy this dependencies and paste it into build.gradle file here as you can see here has been written use kapt plugin for kotlin if we are coding, uh, programming in kotlin we need to use this kapt plugin instead of annotation processor so just uh, replace annotation processor with kapt and apply the plugin For KAPT. KAPT. Let's sync our project. As you can see, our syncing has been successfully done. Now, let's start using our room database, right? So, we need a new lab, a new Kotlin file here. Let's get class and let's give it name as AppDB, right? Okay. Now, as I said, our room database has three components, right? What are they? First one is database and second one is entity and third one is DAO, that is data access uh, objects, right? So, first of all, we need a new file for database. So, this is app data is our database file. That's why it will extend room database right and this file this class will be abstract in nature by default and it contains only abstract functions so uh, now we need one more file for our second component which is entity so i will name it as employee underscore entity right okay now we need to add here notation we need to uh, say my uh, tell my program that it is an entity file so i will give it notation as entity right now here we need to describe all the columns which we need in our uh, database or in our table, employee table, right? So 
first of all we need an primary key for our employee so i will give it name as id employee id which is type of integer and i will give it default as zero and i need one more column in my uh, table which will be name of employee underscore name uh, which will be type of string and which will be empty uh, i need one more uh, column which will be name as employee underscore post right which of course post is employee which will be type of string and which will be empty now how would uh, our program will uh, uh, get know that this is a primary key and this is column and what will be this column name how will the program know so that's why we need to give your annotation right so at the end i will give it as primary key because my employee id will be a primary key in my table and then it has employee name so here uh, if i don't give any annotation it will be okay uh, it will give the this employee name will be the name of my column and this employee post will be the name of uh, my employee post column right but I, if i want to give different name so i can give it by using column info annotation in round brackets i will give the name of my column so i will give it a name as amp employee underscore name right and same i'll do for post column column info name equal to employee underscore post right now our entity class is ready right now we need one more component right our third component and final component is dao class the data access object class so let's create here new kotlin interface because uh, while working with dao we need to create interface right so interface let's give it name as employee underscore uh, dao okay now uh, same as we do, did previously we need to give annotation which type of file it is so it is of dao file so annotation dao and here we need to describe the functions or uh, functions which we are used to uh, which we will use in our application uh, we can call it as uh, queries in sqlite we use as queries but here we use as functions right so this first function will be to save the employee to our database right so save employee in round brackets we will uh, pass the object of our entity right so emp colon uh, what is entity employee underscore entity right and we need to uh, okay now how uh, uh, our application will get know that we need to uh, when we will call this function we need to insert data to database so for that we need to use annotation instead of query we are using annotation so this is uh, the very big difference between sqlite and uh, this room database as you can see here you don't need to remember the query just uh, you need to remember these annotations and you can do operations very easily and user friendly right so our DAO file is ready i think uh, this is our instant operation so let's go to our uh, this database file and here uh, now uh, we need to create a function right uh, so here abstract function as you all know abstract has a class has all the abstract functions so we need to create abstract function and here from here we need to call our DAO file right this employee DAO file so we will create the object of our DAO fun function employee DAO and uh, which is type of employee underscore do right so this when we will call this function which means we are calling this class uh, interface right okay now we need to tell you that it is our database file so annotation database and from here we need to uh, tell the version of our database and all that stuff so first we will uh, pass the entities that we need to use in our database which means we will link this database file to our this entity file so entity uh, in our square brackets again round brackets uh, name of our entity employee entity and colon colon and which is class right so class and let's give a comma and a version which type of which version we are using database version so our database version is one so i think our database file is ready now let's call this file from our main activity right so here we will create a new variable variable db equals to room uh, dot database builder right we need to use database builder and then context of our application that is application context and then we here we need to pass the our database file so our database file is app db right 
तो एप डी बी वीड टू पास ए कोटलिन रिफ्लेक्शन दिस क्लास डॉट जावा इज नोन एज कोटलिन रिफ्लेक्शन कंसेप्ट राइट तो कोटलिन रिफ्लेक्शन फॉर्मा नाउ यू नीट यू हेल्प यू नीट टू से वॉट इज द नेम ऑफ अवर डेटा बेस राइट तो नेम ऑफ अवर डेटा बेस इज लेट्स गिव इट नेम एज एम्प्लॉय डी बी एम्प्लॉय डी बी राइट दिस इज नेम ऑफ अवर डेटा बेस एंड देन डॉट बिल्ड दिस विज दिस स्टेटमेंट विल बिल्ड अवर डेटा बेस राइट दिस वन स्टेटमेंट it will build our database and now we need to uh, let's call our uh, insert method right insert function which we had created previously so for that we need to create the object of our entity class right so emp equals to emp entity let's create the object of this class and let's assign some value what values we need to insert so emp dot uh, id let's give it as first id is one over and uh, first name we will uh, give it name as let's give it uh, my name uh, my name is nilesh and uh, emp dot my post post uh, let's give it as uh, android here yeah, uh, android tv lopia android developer this is my post right so now we need to call that insert function right db so db dot Uh, db is our app db database now employee do which is function uh, type of employee do class right so we need to call this function employee do dot now if we go to employee do here we had created one more function which is save employee which will uh, which is of uh, which will insert our data right so we need to call this methods as this function save employee and in round brackets we need to pass all this data right so all this data has been stored into this variable So let's pass this variable. Now our data will be stored into our database, right? Uh, let's see how it runs. Let's run the program. Okay. Now here, if the data has been stored, we are not printing or showing nothing, right? Uh, so if uh, it will it will not give any error, which means data has been stored, and then we will read that data, right? Do any error? So as you can see, our app has been crash. So let's see what uh, wrong. What's wrong with this? So it is giving error that cannot access database on main thread since it may potentially lock UI for long period of time. So uh, our application is saying that uh, we need we can't run this database program on our main thread. as we are uh, using our main thread so let's create a thread here new thread uh, let's put all this database operations into our this thread and let's start this thread so let's start right we can't do that uh, all database operation into our main thread so we have created here new thread now let's run our program hope so now it will work as you can see our program has been successfully run this is our layout right we had not made any changes to our layout file so this hello world is our layout right uh, so which means our data has been stored into this database let's read our database go to uh, employee do file and here we will create one more function right to read our which will read our database right so let's do that let's create a function function read employee right and which will return the list of employees right list of employees employees means we need to pass entity this entity this all data it will return right so we need to pass this entity file name here uh, emp entity it will return the all data right in the list format uh, so and here we need to pass the annotation that uh, which operation we are performing by calling this function so we need to pass a query so query is uh, uh, select select star from table name right select star from our table name is uh, employee entity so no uh, not actually table name we need to file here pass here file name from which which file data we need to access right so it will select star means all uh, select all the data from the this employee entity so this is our query annotation query 
now let's go to app the sorry for main activity and now we need to call this function right we need to call this function let's call that function db dot employee dot read employee right now we need to read the data that has been stored right so we will use for each loop so one by one it will read all the entries that we had done into our database so we will read it by using log cat right log cat just pass your string at the rate make it the developers comma now we are going to pass the message let's give it as id is dollar dot employee right just copy this statement and let's do same for name and post after id let's give it name is and post is employee name and employee post now uh, it will read all this let's change this data let's enter the second entry second entry is uh, let's give it akt dev which is android developer page right now it will import this second entry right and it will return all the data that uh, we had stored into that table which means it will return the first entry as well as this second entry right so let's run the program and see if uh, the program is running fine or not let's go to logcat and uh, here we have you a notation as akt dev so type here at the rate akt dev and this is our android emulator as you can see our application has been done successfully and here in logcat this is our first entry that is id1 name is nilesh and second and post is android developer and this is our second entry akt dev developers and android developer page let's enter for trial let's try one more time let's give it name as youtube and post is post it it's a website right so youtube is a website so now third time it will insert the third entry and it will return all the three entries right so let's run the program uh, this both are previous entries right and uh, now we run the program and it came from here this is our first entry this is our second entry and this is our third entry which is youtube and it is on website right so in this way you can insert and read the data from the room database uh, hope so you will now uh, it's time to forget sqlite and let's work on room database the latest technology developed by google and uh, it's a user friendly and it's more uh, simple and easy to learn as well as to do operations right just and simple we don't use, need to remember queries all the time just use the annotations and perform the various type of operation so it's very easy hope you will like this tutorial and thanks for watching